Hey, this is Metal Jeff here. Uh, today we're going to be looking at a water block, and it is the Titan X block from Bits Power. Now, this block was originally made from for the Titan X, but because the 980 Ti and Titan X share the same PCB layout, it is compatible as well for the 980 Ti. And that's what I'll be installing this on. So the block base itself is made out of C1100 copper, and that's nickel plated. And then um, the top is made out of acrylic and stainless steel. As you can see, there's just this uh, stainless steel plate right here, which is definitely a fingerprint magnet. The one thing I did notice is there's some like machining marks in the cutouts, like on the other side of this part right here. That you can see where the tool went around and I don't mind the machining marks on there. Some people might. The block features G quarter inch threads and those go all the way through right here. So you can put your fittings on the front or on the back. Another option would be to take this whole module out and put like a uh, one of those bridges on if you have multiple cards. Also featured on the block are three five millimeter LED holes. So you can uh, stick an LED of your choice of color in the block and light up your fluid. And that'll also kind of bring out this Titan X and this Bits Power logo when the light hits it from the side. Uh, included in the package is the block itself along with all your uh, mounting hardware, extra set of O-rings, some thermal pads, and uh, two stop fittings. Also included in the package is a back plate, which is really nice. Uh, most blocks don't come with that. It's something you need to buy additionally, but it also accounts for the extra price. Like all the other Bits Power stuff I've looked at before, this definitely speaks quality, uh, not only in fit and finish, but also just like it, you know, it has that quality weighted feel to it. All the, all the surfaces look great. I don't see any defects at all. Um, it was definitely dirty coming out of the package. I had to give it a wipe down and, and uh, it probably got some dirt on it when uh, it was being assembled, but that wasn't a big deal. It all wiped right clean. I'm gonna go ahead and get this installed in my 980 Ti so you guys can get a look of the card with the block installed. Um, and I'm gonna be, I have an Asus reference card so I'm going to be taking every precaution I can to keep the warranty intact, although that's no guarantee by any means. Um, in order to get the, the one screw off with the sticker on it, I'm going to put a rubber band around it and uh, grab the outside of that rubber band with pliers and then loosen it that way. And I actually have an extra set of screws that I'm going to put on and I'm going to put that one to the side for safekeeping. Um, if you're going to do this without having an extra screw, you just need to tighten it up the same way with a rubber band and plier and make sure you get it tight so it has a so that block has a good contact on your GPU. But that's not at all a guarantee that your warranty won't be voided because as far as I know, EVGA is the only company that supports aftermarket coolers like this. So even if you keep all your stickers intact, um, chances are they'll notice the thermal paste. Didn't run into too many issues. Uh, had a hard time getting one of the screws out. It's really important that you go slow when you're doing these because if you strip the screw out, you have to drill into it. But luckily, took my time, grabbed a electric screwdriver and just uh, that pulled it right out. Other than that, everything went pretty smooth. I was able to get the little bolt off with the warranty sticker intact and Turned out, um, Bits Power had included all the hardware necessary for mounting this, so I didn't even need to use those. So I went ahead and uh, stuck all my hardware back in the CP sink for safekeeping, and I will cover this with some plastic and just uh, put it back in the box. During this process, when I had the card taken apart, I painted the back plate white on there um, just to match the rest of my build. Other than that, I think the block looks great. Can't wait to uh, get it in the machine and get some performance data. Um, card was running about in the 40s and 50s idle, you know, 45 or so, and then uh, load is up in like 80, 85 
during gaming. So uh, we're hoping to greatly reduce that. I know my 980 was running at like 29 degrees Celsius with a water block on it, but I think that I think this thing draws a little more power. So I'm optimistic, but I don't think I'm gonna see that low of temperatures. And the next step is to put this thing into defector, but I'm having a little color issue, so I'm gonna, uh, I need to drain the loop anyways, but I think I'm gonna flush it out. Okay, so I mentioned my fluid color issue before, and I think it was just because my rads weren't cleared out enough. Um, I did a good uh, clean before, rinsed them out with distilled a few times, shook them around, but the problem I had was my uh, Mayhem's raspberry purple fluid. Uh, just basically got more and more blue, almost to a level where it's like a turquoise color. And based on the forums I read, a lot of people had this problem with like leftover flux in the radiators from manufacturing. Um, we'll basically kind of change the pH level of your loop, and then the Mayhem's pastel fluid will have a reaction to this. So what I did is use the Mayhem's Blitz Part 2 in my loop and that should neutralize the pH. Now, this might not be a permanent solution, so I'm gonna keep an eye on this new fluid and see if it continues to change. Uh, maybe down the road, I might have to take the radiators out and use the part one on them. So I, I did order some more of uh, the pastel raspberry purple, which I had before, but Performance PCs accidentally sent me some of the uh, just regular purple pastel fluid. So I went ahead and used it, and I really liked the results. It's a lot darker than what I had before. And another thing was the blocks had the same hole placement, so my old tubes that I had bent previously worked no problem. Uh, I didn't have to re-bend tubes or anything. And then a little tip that I thought I'd mention is that uh, using silicone gel to place LEDs in the block. So. What you do is just fill up the little five millimeter hole with silicone and then stick the LED in there. Leave it for about 12 hours until the silicone dries. And then uh, you should be able to pop, pop that out and it'll be a little perfect fitting uh, little plug with the LED inside of it. I don't think it messes with the light quality too much. It might, it might diffuse it a tiny bit. I was able to pull those out of my last block and plug them right back into the new block and they fit fine and won't fall out. So as far as temps go, I ran, a, I got into Metal Gear Solid 5 a little bit, played about three or four hours of that, and uh, the temps never got above 38 degrees, so I'd say the block is doing its job. Um, idle's about 29, 28, 29 degrees Celsius, and uh, it definitely went up to like a 90%, 98% load. So I haven't played around with any overclocks on the card yet, but I think I will do that. Um, no real reason to overclock it right now because it's eating everything I throw at it, but CPU temps are also great too. Um, CPUs usually hover about uh, anywhere from like low 30s to uh, 40s, depending on the load. Uh, and that's great for a 5960X. And that is overclocked to uh, 3.8 gigahertz. So it's a slight overclock, but getting great temps all around. So really happy with the cooling system and I'm really happy with the 980 Ti block. Anyways, thanks for tuning in to this video. Um, be sure to have some more out for you soon. I'm gonna get going on that scratch case build tomorrow and start uh, cutting up aluminum and uh, should have a build log started for that pretty soon. And uh, we'll see you on the next one.